Good coffee always hits the spot. Hello writers, today I just want to talk about this whole idea of how we compare ourselves to other authors and how most of the time all that does is make us feel down in the dumps and oh woe is me and to have a pity party and suck our thumbs. I had a great month in July, 31 days of which one day I was unable to write, but otherwise I had a good time. If you've seen any of the almost daily shorts that I uploaded, you'll see that I made the mistake of trying to write at times that weren't suiting me halfway through the months. And so I was getting worse and worse and more and more tired and making progress that was underneath the gradient that I needed to move forward with in order to hit my 60,000 word target for the month. In the end, it worked out okay and I finished on 61,000. But this week, what I've found is that it's easy to go into an emotional slump after all that time and effort of daily consistent writing. It makes you wonder, how does a full-time writer cope with consistent output of words day after day after day and then do it again the next month? That's been a, a real wake-up call for me, a real learning point in which I'm trying to think, okay, can I write again in August and have great output that I'm really happy with and proud of and create either another first draft manuscript or tidy up a work in progress. I'm sure you've got some of those sitting around on your shelves or in your filing cabinets and finish something else that's important to us as a writer. But this week I've been dipping into other books and I've had several great experiences. First of all, I've read a book by a friend of mine in Yorkshire called Susanna Scott. She writes brilliant, warm, heart-wrenching, emotional stories about people in rural communities where somebody comes to that community looking for solace or peace and quiet or a restful time. And then adventures happen or new romance begins. And there's often a mystical story or an aspect of folklore within Yorkshire that she explores. And I read on my Kindle a book called Druid's Oak Farm. I'm new to reading cozy mystery. I'm new to reading rom-com. And I think Susanna Scott blends both of those things really well, but also with history and folklore. And so you end up with a, a really great story with rich characters that you can enjoy and appreciate. And I was making some notes in one of my journals last night, just thinking, what do I remember of the story? And it was great. All the characters' names came back. I was able to think about the plot and draft out how she had done that. And then I realized that what I was looking at was the idea of, could I write a cozy mystery? Could I write a rom-com? That's not my activity. You can see on the, on the shelves behind me that I've got a book here called Climbing Out of Debt. I've got another one here called 10 Minute Budget, which I actually wrote in a one month NaNoWriMo process. And then I've got some other books here. Um, this one I love, Simple Self-Help, and another one that I'm immensely proud of and is probably my bestseller, Declutter Your Home, all by Nick Sturgeon, yours truly, of course, for book promotion. But I read that book by Susanna Scott and I absolutely loved it. And then I looked at her reviews. I went to leave my review and it was a five-star review. And she's got a huge amount of reviews. And I thought to myself, wow, I wish I had that number of reviews. Back in January, Susanna Scott and I, we met up in Scarborough on the east coast of Yorkshire. And we had a great few hours together in a pub talking about our writing process and the books that we've created. And it was an amazing process because we talked about story development and non-fiction. And one of the things that Sue had said to me when we met up at the pub, she, we both arrived by train. She said, oh, I met this woman at the train station, an older lady with a rucksack and a real kind of character to her. And when I read Druid's Oak Farm this week, and Sue reminded me of it in a Facebook exchange we've been having, about our writing processes. She said, do you recognize the old woman at the beginning of the book? And there is a character in her book called Beth who owns a country house and she meets the younger protagonist in the book called Maeve. And she invites Maeve to come to her country house and join the residential community that live under one roof. And the woman who was the character for the owner of the country house is the same lady that Sue met at Scarborough Railway Station before she and I got together in the pub and began our conversation together face to face. Let's have a coffee.
I don't know about you, but I find that life is full of synchronicity and full of good events happening and the timings work really well in our favour. But the night that I had finished Druid's Oak Farm, I got an email from Luke Richardson. It was part of a general email newsletter update. Luke, like me, is another Nottingham-born author. Two years ago, I had gone down from Yorkshire and I was working in Nottinghamshire for one of the big housing associations operated by the City Council. Luke and I met up for a drink on Mansfield Road and we had a great discussion about how you create characters and the development of story. But rather than being a technical conversation over a few beers, it was a conversation between two authors who just are in that place where we love to create and to or scribble and scratch and to bring our stories to life. And we've stayed in touch ever since. In his newsletter, what Luke was doing is promoting a short novella that he's written with Ernest Dempsey, the American writer. And it was great, but he was promoting the fact that this was a digital narration that we could buy direct from his website rather than going to download it from the Amazon platform and of course, doing so really helps the author. So I went to Book Funnel and I downloaded the book to my phone and I absolutely loved it. And what I've been thinking about this morning is this whole idea of how we might compare ourselves to other authors. Somebody might have 200 reviews, somebody might have 2000 reviews on one of their books and they're all four and four and a half or five stars. And that process of comparisonitis can really affect us and make us think, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm not doing as well as, or etc., etc. But just those conversations with those two author friends this week has really reminded me that you and I are doing completely what we want to do and that comparison is absolutely not relevant. It's an easy trap to fall into. It's an easy place to say, oh no, it's not good enough. What I produce, I, I have to be at a different level. Or I look at somebody else's creative endeavor and their genre and I think, oh, maybe I should go into that genre and I'd have more sales. But that's crazy. Stick with what you do. I write and love writing non-fiction books. That's the way my mind is wired to think, how would I deal with this problem or how have I dealt with this personal situation? When you're looking at the work that you do, focus on that work only. Focus on the talent you have. Focus on how you love this particular form of creativity. I'm talking about books, but we are artists. We are creative people. So comparison within the creative industry, within the space that's occupied by you and I as creative individuals or creative indies is sometimes the reference that we use. It doesn't matter. What it does do, if you get stuck in the whole idea of comparison and evaluating what you do against what somebody else does, you don't know their situation. You don't know their life circumstances. What I've learned from this week is don't compare myself to other people. Focus on the work that I love to create and the output that is important to me and find more time to do those things which I am passionate about creating so that I can create another book in the next few months and then another project in another few months. That's all that matters. All we have, time-wise, all we have is today. If I can record a video today, if I can add 500 words to a work in progress to jot down some ideas, but also if you and I can take from the conversations we have with fellow creatives, authors, potters, sculptors, digital coders, the people that we connect with, the people that are part of our tribe and our community, if we can learn one or two or three things from any one of those conversations and apply it to our craft, put it into practice with our creative endeavor and with the projects that mean something to us, then we will win on our own terms and it's our own terms, your own terms, which are all that matter. Be creative, be focused, find the time to be productive, but just enjoy what you're doing. If you're a writer like me, happy writing. If you are any other form of artist or creator, happy creating. Get on with this thing which is your path to pursue and it's your point of meaningful work. Enjoy it and stay active with it.